Hi everyone, hello. Um, this is the presentation for group G24 for the course CL246 heat transfer. Uh, so we throughout the semester we've done a research project and the problem statement for our project is uh, as follows on the screen. Resolving the loss and efficiency of solar panels due to overheating. So we all know that solar energy is one of the most upcoming renewable forms of energy uh, but there's a problem there so when you when we use solar panels to harvest solar energy uh, solar panels heat up over time as they're kept in the sunlight uh, and as they heat up <coughs> uh, their efficiency decreases so your solar panels becomes less so your solar panel becomes less and less efficient uh, so we are trying to fix that problem. This is actually a very relevant problem right now because the entire world is trying to transition from renew uh, non-renewable to renewable energy sources and solar energy is something that is available almost everywhere. <coughs> so we are trying to solve that problem. Uh, if, 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 if we are successful at solving this problem then it will really be a game changer for renewable energy sources in the world so we will make already existing solar panels much more efficient we'll save a lot we'll save a ton of money in terms of r and d uh, because companies are companies and organizations are trying to look for more efficient methods to harvest solar energy and this is also something that's easily implementable uh, so we'll this we'll come to the solution just before that, uh, the way we've gone about doing this is first we've analyzed the problem. <coughs> uh, we've gone through some background literature to identify that this is an important problem that needs to be solved. Uh, then we've tried to model the problem. We've tried to model, we looked at the solar panel and what it's like and what's happening. And then we've tried to use whatever we've learned in the classroom for this project to solve that problem. So I'll go to the next. Yeah, so these are our team members for G24. You can have a look. Yeah, so now we come to the available information, the user story and the problem. So uh, here's the context. Four, 430 quintillion joules of energy from the sun hit the earth every hour. And that is more than the entire planet consumes in a year. We receive more energy in an hour than we, conserve, uh, we consume in a year. However, we are not able to harness this energy for a lot of reasons. Uh, the effectiveness of solar panels, uh, the feasibility of using them. And, uh, and one thing we can really try to fix is the effectiveness of solar panels and their efficiency. So as solar panels heat up when they are kept in the sunlight, they lose efficiency and less power is absorbed. So let's try to fix that problem. Uh, here's a pictorial representation of the situation that I've described earlier. So you can look at this diagram on the left. And uh, this is a diagram that shows the efficiency of solar panels compared uh, plot. The, the, uh, this is a diagram with the efficiency of solar panels plotted against the temperature. Uh, so as you can see here in the beginning as the temperature is low, the efficiency is fairly constant as the temperature rises. But after a point, if the temperature increases more, then the efficiency begins to fall significantly and this is something that happens in the real life because you keep a solar panel out in the sun for an entire day then it will reach higher temperatures and the efficiency will take a hit so we can look at the diagram at the right this is a diagram that shows the power generated by the solar panel uh, against the temperature so in the beginning as the temperature is increasing uh, the power is also increasing but after a point if the temperature increases more the efficiency drop is also significant and so you are not able to harness all the possible power that is incident on the solar panel so this is a problem that we are trying to solve uh, and the way we do that is by uh, modeling this, this scenario in a simple diagram and then applying the heat transfer methods that we learned throughout this course the question that we're posing for that we're posing for this project is that we have considered a solar panel whose dimensions are already given. The panel was provided with a system of cooling, uh, which is mounted on the rear side of the PV panel. A control circuit was designed to control the switch on and off the cooling system. We're supposed to find the mass flow rate of water that maximizes the efficiency of the panel. 
we've chosen this question because we are supposed to maximize the efficiency of the panel and we have chosen the method called evaporative cooling which provides water from one side of the uh, panel and it comes water comes out from the other side of the panel this provides some cooling for the temperature rise that occurs due to different modes of heat transfer the different uh, transfer heat transfer modes are conduction convection and radiation that we have used in our project conduction can be explained that the pv module in contact with the other material uh, pv modules other material and the panel in contact con uh, con uh, has some heat losses which can be classified as conduction when the air blows over the panel it also causes in some convective heat transfer and some heat loss can be uh, occur due to that it can be classified as convection when uh, when the panel is in contact with the surrounding it also radiates some amount of heat which is classified as radiation the simplified geometry of the solar panel can be uh, seen here water we have the water flowing in pipes a layer below the solar panel this is the pv panel a layer below that the water is flowing in pipes above the water flow there is the air is flowing uh, air is flowing so the air comes from this side and comes out of this side and due to this heat transfer occurs due to uh, conduction this also loses some heat due to radiation as so the uh, radiation occurs on the pv panel from top assumptions that we have taken for this project is that the intensity falls uniformly on the solar panel we have assumed that there is no change in intensity on any part of the solar panel even though that's not uh, the ideal case that happens in real life uh, we have assumed that the temperature of inlet air and outlet air is same which also would not be true in the real case uh, as as the temperature would temperature of the air would change when it goes to the panel as the panel temperature is different panel temperature is we have assumed to be same uh, completely which would not which would also depend on the position of the panel and also the angle of the panel so these are the assumptions that we have taken for the project the different knowns and unknowns of the project are uh, we have assumed that uh, the irradiate intensity length height and the atmosphere temperature and the psilon is all given we are supposed to calculate mass flow rate so after doing energy balance on our control volume we can say that the energy inlet equals to energy outlet since because there is no generation of energy within the uh, control volume or there is no loss of energy so energy that comes in uh, comes in two forms one through the solar radiation that falls on the panel that is equals to alpha times ilb where i is the radiation intensity and alpha is the absorptivity coefficient of the panel so this is the net energy that is absorbed by the panel and the other part of the energy comes through the air in form of convection and the energy that exists the exits the control volume will be in different forms like one will be in the form of air that uh, similarly that similarly in the way that the air uh, brought in energy will also take energy out and we have assumed that the temperature of air that goes in the vent will be equal to that one that goes out of the vent so the energy that air takes in will be equal to the energy that takes out so it will also be equals to q air and the other form is the energy and the other form is the energy radiated by the solar panel itself because it has some temperature it will radiate the energy from its top surface and and from the top of its surface it will also re uh, release some energy in form of convection because some air will be present above the panel and it will take away some heat and also some part of the energy will be stored and will be used in some generating in will be used for generating some work that will be the equal to the power generated and some some of the energy will be really uh, will be will be removed from the control volume in form of the evaporated water or some liquid which is denoted by m dot into l and the power generated by solar panel will be will can also be written in form of eta times alpha ilb where alpha ilb is the net energy absorbed and eta is the efficiency of converting it to work so from here we can we we got our energy balance equations 
over our control volume and using that we can calculate the mass flow rate that is required to maintain the constant temperature of solar panel surface and on and on further assumption that the solar panel surface is gray then we and it is independent of wavelength we can also as we can also approximate the absorptivity coefficient as emissivity so alpha becomes epsilon and on on further simplifying the equation we can get the mass flow rate as 1 minus theta times epsilon ilb minus sigma epsilon l into b into t to the power 4 minus h into t minus t atmosphere divided by the latent heat of vaporization and since the temperature of the solar panel surface generally remain in the range of 30 to 80 degrees celsius the radiation from the top surface would be negligible as compared to the energy absorbed or lost due to convection so we can easily neglect the C sigma epsilon lb t to the power 4 term from our mass flow rate expression and this is the experimental graph of efficiency of the solar panel versus the temperature so from here we can get the optimal temperature required to obtain the ma maximum efficiency and using this graph we can see that the optimal temperature is around 55 degrees celsius and efficiency comes around 12.5 so using these values of efficiency and temperature we can substitute them in our expression for mass flow rate and we can obtain our result we can also see the relation of power versus temperature. We can see that there is some particular temp optimal temperature where the power generated by the solar panel is maximum. We can also use this to obtain the required flow rate to maintain most efficient state. And for cal calculating the convection coefficient for the convection loss that is occurring on the top surface of the solar panel, we use the Nusselt number correlation for flat plate that is 0.66 Re to the power half and Brandel number to the power 1 by 3. And the Reynolds number for the stagnant air comes around 156 and the Brandel number is around 0.69. So from that we can get the Nusselt number to be 7.31 and using the Nusselt number correlation of, with the H, we can get the value of H as N u k by L and which comes around 0.17. And after substituting all the values in our expression, we, we can get our mass flow rate as 0 0.049, 0 0.409 grams per second. Actually, this is the mass flow rate that gets evaporated every second. But since we have assumed the steady state flow of water, we can assume the rate of evaporation is equal, should be equal to the rate of flow rate required so that we cannot accumulate water or we cannot face loss of water. So the value of Q comes around 0 0.409 grams per second. And this is the mesh representing our solar panel generated using Gmesh software. And this is the heat profile, heat simulation profile that we got using our open foam. We set our boundary, boundary condition of the top surface as fixed gradient and the, in the similar way for the bottom surface. And, the, and so we got a linear temperature profile along the thickness of the solar panel. The left figure represents the temperature profile for the initial condition when the radiation just started to fall on the surface. And the right one represents the the steady state when the temperature across the thickness of the solar panel became time independent it became fixed uh, so now that we've done our extensive analysis it's time to draw inferences from the calculations and graphs so here are our inferences uh, first of all as we can see from our calculation we can control the temperature of the panel using the mass flow rate secondly uh, from a very high temperature as the temperature of the PV cell decreases, its efficiency and power increases. Thirdly, the efficiency and power hit a peak at a point. Uh, and as the temperature decreases beyond this point, the efficiency and power start to decrease. Uh, so here are the conclusions of our report from the inferences. Our hypothesis that we can find the value of a mass flow rate for which we can attain an optimum temperature turns out to be true. As we can see from the graph and our calculations, we can now adjust the value of M to cool the panel to its optimum temperature, thereby maximizing its efficiency and solving the problem. 
through our solution we can increase the life of pv cells and their efficiency and this will reduce our capital loss so we will be able to harness more energy uh, thank you so i'll just conclude by saying that through uh, by the means of this report we proposed a very simple design modification in photovoltaic cells that will help us gain much more energy out of them